So in previous videos, I've mentioned problems I've had with my Grizzly 891 planer with skipping feed rollers. When I initially got this from Grizzly, and I got one of the uh, first models they shipped out, when you ran a board through it, the feed rollers would skip and you'd hear a thump and it would leave a gouge in the board. Now I sent it to Grizzly. They sent me some replacement parts that didn't fix the problem. They ultimately sent me a complete second planer and the second planer has now worked well for over a year. But I want to thank Bill Mendenhall who saw one of my previous videos on YouTube and pointed out that Grizzly has since actually made the design modification that I suggested in an earlier video. I'll include a clip for that now. I think it might come down to a design issue. The distance between these sprockets is too far apart. I mean, a chain is a discrete entity. Now, another fix would be to install a tensioner like you see on the main, on the chain that connects the two uh, drive rollers. So here's what Grizzly has sent me. They've sent me a kit to install an idler. So what do we have? We have a part and also some small bolts and washers. And with that, they emailed me some instructions which I've printed out, which we'll work through now. It looks like they're obviously installing the idler and they're replacing some cap screws with some wider washers. So let's work through that now. So the first step is obviously to take off this cover that shields the drive chains. Side. Now the issue, the issue comes down to this chain has some slack into it and if there's too much slack during drive the chain will skip and that'll cause a problem on your workpiece. Now the newer models include this idler pulley assembly so we will install that now. So we'll take a five millimeter Allen wrench hex head I guess we reuse the same bolt. That might be too tight. That seems to run fine and actually that's what I thought it needed was just something to keep a little bit of tension on that. Well that's pretty simple. They also want us to replace some of these cap screws which are securing the feed roller bushing block, which let's see if we can find where those are. So if you look behind the drive pulleys for the rollers, there's the screw that they were trying to point us to in the instructions. These screws are actually quite a bit easier to see around the back side. There's one here and one here. So let's replace those. Place those with these. So, you see why the washer has a flat spot in it. Five millimeter hex head.
there you have it. On the back side, both of those bolts and washers have been replaced as instructed. On the front side, I think this will be a lot easier to do if I remove the drive chains. So at this point, the battery in my microphone died. But once I got the pulleys off on the front side, it was fairly straightforward to remove the bolts at the end of the feed roller guide blocks. The replacement bolts had some sort of thread locking compound on them, so it took a little bit of force to turn. This would have been a lot easier if I had a longer T-handle Allen wrench, but this got the job done. So there you have it. On the front side, those two bolts have been replaced. Now we just gotta put all the chains and sprockets back on. So installing a little idler was easy. Installing a little bushing block, screws and washers was kind of a pain in the butt, but it's done. All right, so let's run a piece of wood through it and see if it behaves itself. I'd say that works just fine. So now we can put the cover back on. And we're back in business.